What's going on, guys? My name is Cody, and I'm a graphic designer living in San Diego. And today we're going to talk about mood boards. Now, mood boards are essentially a presentation tool that are very effective and extremely helpful when you're working on a project from the very beginning, and you want to communicate a visual direction with a client or maybe somebody else or maybe even establishing your own look and feel and making sure that you're consistent with that look and feel. Think of a mood board as basically a collection of images, colors, fonts, different assets that you're grouping together to sort of communicate an idea, a feeling. I'd highly recommend using mood boards before you start any design project nowadays because it'll really help you kind of flex those creative muscles and kind of polish the idea of curating assets and images and making sure that everything that you're using in a project is cohesive and it follows the same look and feel. One of the reasons why I personally like to use mood boards in my process is because it eliminates that like disconnect or confusion. You know, you're not shooting in the dark. You've already established the look and feel. You've got the client to sign off on it. And everybody's on the same page visually. So when you go to spend 30, 40 plus hours on a design project, you're not, you know, spinning your wheels and going off in the wrong direction. So now that you have sort of a background of what mood boards are, let's go ahead and jump into some design software and make one. All right, so I have Photoshop open here with a template of a mood board that I created myself. Um, I'll put this in the description so you can download it if you want, but I'll just very quickly remake this so you can see how I did it. But essentially it's just boxes that I've kind of put together in my own little layout here. So nothing special, but you've got areas for images to go and then you also have a section for colors. So I always like to include a few spot colors that will match, you know, the look and feel of the imagery that I'm going with and just sort of, you know, the overall vibe of, of the direction that I'm going for. So that's always helpful to have some colors right here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and speed this up and just show you really quickly how I made this, uh, this layout. Alright, so I've made this layout similar to the one that I had showed you guys before. Um, we got all these boxes for images and then we have a section here for color. So to save some time, I've already gone through and scoured the internet. I went on like Pinterest and uh, some other websites, Instagram, things like that. Um, and I collected some images that I want to make for this mood board. So for this mood board, I want to make it about Brindle, which is one of my side projects. I've been working on with a few buddies for over two years now. And uh, essentially, it's a curated e-commerce platform that, you know, allows you the ability to find uh, products for your dog or cat. And, you know, we're talking well-crafted goods, trendy items, things like that. So um, I want to make a mood board that has to do with that project. And I think it'll be fun. I want it to look sophisticated, bright and airy, but still trendy and um, you know, just visually kind of fun to look at. So, so I'm just gonna start dragging in the images and start masking them into these boxes that I've created here. So we've got these uh, cute little French bulldogs hanging out in a dog teepee. And I just wanna use this as like my main sort of image to kind of set the tone for everything. So I'll, I'll right click on this rectangle here, make sure that's selected. And then I'll put my image right above it on the layer panel here. So you can see it's overlapping that rectangle. And I'm gonna hold Alt, and you see how between the two layers there's that little arrow and the little like uh, square? That indicates that I'm about to make a mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and it just placed it within there. So now it's like basically masked within this rectangle. And I can still scale it to kind of crop it the way I want. And I'll put these guys just right in the corner there like that. So there we go. So now every image I add in here, I want it to build off of this image. I want it to be complementary or you know, feel like it's in the same neighborhood of, of this image. So I've already selected these, but just keep that in mind when you go hunting for images that they kind of fit within this look and feel of the first image that you placed. Um, so let's see, here's a cool one. So now I'm, I'm bringing in some more greenery because I want green to be something that um, is evident in this, this look and feel. So again, I'll go to my rectangle, make sure that the image is on top of it and I'll hold Alt and then just kind of drag it in there. So I'll just size this down. What I really want to show in this little box is that there's black, there's some typography, there's green, and then we have some white negative space. I think that's going to be a big, big thing in this mood board is that I want a lot of bright, white, and airy negative space. So I have to always keep that in mind as I build this. Uh, here's another image. This one's a little bit busy, but um, I think because I have this sort of negative space here, it still works. and. Um, I don't want to use a ton of yellow, but I think we can use this yellow very sparingly if we're, if we're very careful about it. So again, let me grab my rectangle and let's move our cat, our little kitty right on top of this, 
just mask them in there. But do you see how in this image, you've got some green, you've got some white, you've got a little bit of brown. So you can kind of see how these are kind of flirting with each other. We got the little brown French Bulldog, this brown edge of the chair. So they're all kind of, you know, closely related, even though they're different images that I found on, from completely different places. Um, Let's see what we got, yeah. And I think for this image, this image of this, this puppy on this chair, this is probably the most we would do with that brown. Like this is um, this is something that I think is the maximum usage of that brown color. But see, it still feels bright and airy, so it doesn't feel overpowering because it's a naturally lit kind of shot. Maybe that this was shot by a window or something like that. Um, so that's that's something that you want to consider as well. Is what's your photography style? Is it is it natural lit? Is it studio lit? Like what, what exactly are we going for? I think in this like in this scene here we want it to be kind of naturally lit. Alright, so let's keep dropping in some images. I'm just gonna keep moving these in here. Got a little Sheba here. And now we're starting to get some of that like burnt orange or kind of brownish orange color here. Again, the green kind of plays off what we've already put down. And in mood boards, I like to put like something drastically not different but like this is a good contrast from everything we see here so this is a little bit busier this is kind of busy this one i wouldn't say is busy but there's a lot of, of brown in this one so it's kind of a nice little contrast to put an image in like this that gives you a little bit more breathability and um, just shows that like you can do both if you're careful about how you do it so this is a nice one to kind of balance out everything we're seeing here and here's another here's another airy one that i think will work that maybe this indicates how we could use um, like product photography. So maybe we do some like top-down style shots like this. Oops, I made a duplicate of that. Um, but essentially, this plays off all the colors that we have. So we got the black, we got the white, white negative space, a little bit of gray. I think there's some grays here going on too. So these all feel very closely related. We're basically making relatives between all these little boxes here. And I think we have room for one more image here, so let's see what we got. Yeah, so here's another area where we could use some typography to kind of show what the tone is with our uh, with our typography and fonts. So because I want it to be clean, bright, airy, sophisticated, I think this is kind of a, a good font that goes along with that. It's it's approachable and it's not too aggressive, and it it feels like it will work in our uh, in our direction. You know, maybe later we find that like another font might work better. Like maybe we go all caps like this link right here or this butt first coffee. Um, but I think right now is the time when you're gonna kind of figure out what works and what doesn't work. So I like the imagery. See, now that I'm looking at all of it together, I think maybe we do go all caps for everything. So we might have to revise that later down the road, but you can still see that like white text would work pretty well on an image like this. And you know, we got the brown, we got a little bit of green here, we got the white. So these all kind of feel like they're all related or they're all kind of working together. And so the final step I like to do is just, just grab some, some colors from all of these. So I really like this burnt orange. I want that to be a color that we use in this. Um, definitely the black has to be apparent. And then I want that green to always be consistent and like used throughout the brand. And then I always leave a space for the color that's most prominent. So in this case, it's gonna be this kind of white gray color that we'll use. So that's our leading color. And then these are all colors that we'll kind of use together, but sparingly to kind of support this visual narrative that we have going on. So as you can see really quickly, you know, you can start plopping in images and start seeing what works and what doesn't work. And you know, if you have an Instagram, this is really important to think about. Like if you wanna curate your Instagram, do something like this, make a mood board. You know, you can start to come up with rules and, and do's and don'ts and really quickly see what works for your, for your direction. Hopefully this helps you with your design process and you're able to use mood boards in a way that will help you achieve your design goals and make sure that your clients are happy, you're happy, and you make some awesome shit. So um, I also wanted to ask you guys, you know, what are some topics or videos that maybe I'm not touching on right now that you would like to learn about? Um, right now, I'm just kind of making things up on the fly as I think about them throughout the day. But I would love to hear your uh, your recommendations in the comments and, you know, I can make some videos for you.